Get those garden tools out and be ready to get dirty because we're adding a custom crop to Minecraft. New topics added to the Forge and Fabric courses such as tameable and writable entities, projectiles, throwable projectiles and boats, as well as first steps to biomes and dimensions. Courses linked in the description below. All right, we find this back in a little bit more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom crop to Minecraft, which is going to be more straightforward than you might think. However, once again, there are a few different things that you need to pay close attention to. Number one is going to be, we're going to need a custom class. And this custom class is going to be called the Strawberry Crop Block. Over here in this case, there you go. This will extend the Crop Block class. And we will hover over this, create constructor matching super. And of course, we are not done quite just yet. Because of course, the crop somehow needs to know what age it is, right? So it needs to age over a period of time. And for this, we first of all need a max age as well as an h integer property we're going to add this and then i'm going to explain what each of those things are so this is going to be a public static final int called max underscore age and this is going to be equal to five and then this is going to be a public static final integer property called age equal to block state properties dot h underscore five now what does all of this mean well the max age should be fairly self-explanatory that's just an integer however the integer property right why can't this also be an integer that's the first question that you might want to ask and the reason is that if it's a static integer then it's going to be the same for all different strawberry crop blocks obviously and if it's a non-static integer it's still going to be the same for all of the different blocks because we're creating this block class once in the mod blocks class, right? And what the actual blocks inside of the world, right? If I have two different weed blocks next to each other, obviously they can have different ages, right? That should be fairly self-explanatory to you. But the reason they can have different ages is because they are looking at an integer property instead of just an integer. And this is specific to the block state. So each individual block inside of the world, except for the block class in and of itself, this is sort of a difference between block states and blocks. And that's why we need the integer property over here. And once you have an integer property, you need to overwrite the create block state definition method where we want to take the p builder and call the add method and adding the age right here. There's a couple of other methods that we want to overwrite, namely the get max age method. We also want to overwrite the get age property method. And we also want to overwrite the get base seed ID. Max age should be fairly self explanatory. Again, this is just returning max age. The integer property is just going to return age over here. And then the seed, well, we don't have that yet. So we're going to make a deliberate error. So we don't forget to add this as well. A max age being five, the reason why we have to specifically define this is if I middle mouse button click on the crop block class over here, you can see that the max age right here is actually seven. So this goes from zero to seven, for example, for wheat. But in this case, the strawberry only goes from zero to five. This is a thing that you can, of course, change as well. So if you wanted to have a block or a crop that has more ages or less ages, then of course you can do that totally fine. If you have a max age above seven, then you also need to change the shape by age voxel shape area over here, because if you don't, then you're actually going to get an error. So just keep that in mind. But with a little bit of Java knowledge, this should be fairly self-explanatory to you. So it should not be that bad. Right. And now we can jump into the mod blocks class and actually create our custom block over here. Let's just sure duplicate the sapphire trapdoor. And this is going to be the strawberry underscore crop and the same thing here in the name strawberry underscore crop. And this is extremely important. We do not want to call the register block method. We want to call blocks dot register. Why do we want to do this? Well, because the actual crop itself does not have a block item associated with it, but the seeds are going to be the block item. So this is going to be the strawberry crop block over here. We're going to copy over the wheat in terms of the properties. And then we want to call no occlusion as well as no collision over here and no block set type is needed. So that's going to be the entire registry object. Now onto the seeds. The seeds are then generated in the mod items or they are added in the mod items over here. So let's just get the pine cone. That's going to be fine. This is going to be the strawberry underscore seeds. And then here as well, this is the strawberry underscore seeds. And this is going to be a item name block item with its first parameter being the block that it represents. This is, of course, the block that we've just added. Mod blocks that strawberry crop that get and then just item properties, and we don't need to add anything to them. Now, the reason we're using the item name block item is actually fairly straightforward. If we were to go into the en underscore us json file to translate this, if we're using the item name block item, what we can do is we can translate it as follows. We can just get the item tutorial mod and then strawberry underscore seeds. And those are, of course, going to be the strawberry seeds, right? That's awesome. 
However, if we were to just use a normal block item, then what we would have to do is we would have to call the strawberry seeds. Then the key for the strawberry seeds would actually be block.tutorialmode.strawberry underscore crop. This is kind of weird. That's why you want to use that class in this case. Let's also add it to the creative mode tab. Otherwise, I might just forget that. That's going to be an item over here. There you go. And there's going to be the seeds. There we go. Awesome. Added those as well. And lastly, we can get this error done over here. So this is going to be mode items.strawberryseeds.get. Awesome. And with that, let's actually also add the textures over here. So there's going to be the block textures. It's going to be the stages 0 to all the way to 5. And then also the item texture for the seeds. Those are, of course, all going to be available to you in the description below as well, including all the code as well, because now the data gen has a little bit more tricky because we're going to start with the loot table. And of course, the loot table for a particular crop is going to be a little bit more complicated when you think about it because, well, it should only drop the strawberry itself, right? When it actually reaches its max age, right? Before, it should not drop that. It should only drop the seeds before, but not the actual the actual thing that is going to grow. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy over what I have over here. This is, of course, available to you. So this is going to be, of course, the strawberry crop block age over here, right? And the general idea is just that it's two different things. So you can see it's a loot item condition builder over here. And we're just saying, hey, we want the specific strawberry crop over here to have a particular property. And the property is that the age of this particular block should be five. And then once that is true, we are allowed to drop the strawberries. That's pretty much all that we're doing here. You can always take a look at the vanilla block loot class over here. And for example, search for wheat and you will see that this is, it has exactly the same thing. You can see it's a loot condition builder over here, and this has the crop block age of seven, and only then is it going to drop the wheat. That's all that there is to it. So that's what's needed for the loot table when it comes to the block states. Well, um, it is what it is, but sadly, we will need some custom stuff again, uh, because for some reason, Forge once again doesn't offer us the thing that we need for this. So what I have is I have a states method. So this is just going to go through this. So you can see this is once again the strawberry crop block over here. There you go. And you can see that get age property actually is not public over here. So we want to make this public. That's what we need to cast it in there. Uh, so that's quite important. And let's actually call this the strawberry states. This is already going to be done in the GitHub repository when you take a look at it. And this is then going to be the make strawberry crop method over here. There you go, the, which we have to call. So sadly, once again, a little bit of a custom stuff. I don't know if there if once again, if anyone knows of an easier way to do this in Forge over here, Feel free to leave me a comment down below. I have sadly not found that. But this is going to be make strawberry crop. Then we're going to pass in the strawberry crop right here. Dot get. The model name is going to be strawberry underscore stage. And the second one is going to be the strawberry underscore stage as well. That's just the naming convention that I have. And then in this case, we also have to cast this to a crop block over here. And then we should be good to go. Then we can just go to the mod item models and just make the seeds. Those are luckily just normal seeds over here in this case. That's just the strawberry seeds and that's actually everything that we need. So with that done, we can now run the data over here and everything should be going through totally fine. And there you go, nine written JSON files. And with that done, we can jump into the game and see if it works. All right, finds us back in Minecraft and let's just take a look at whether or not we can grow some strawberries over here so we can definitely plant them. That is awesome to see. And if I get some bone meal out of here, right? Let's just get some bone meal to speed up the process. And you can see there they are. So they grow in different stages, of course. There we go. And if I were to go to survival mode over here and harvest the fully grown ones, you can see it's going to drop a strawberry as well as some seeds. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And that is as easy as it can be to add custom crops to Minecraft. And that's already it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll continue with crops to make a two block high crop in Minecraft. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.